Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host today. Uh, joining me today is a gentleman by the name of Arthur Jenkins. Junior, 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 yeah, Arthur Jenkins Junior. You might have seen this young man before because, in all due respect, we, uh, uh, Colonel Jenkins, Colonel Jenkins was a good friend of mine, and called me up uh, and said that uh, here's a young man that uh, Bruce, he should be in the Marine Corps. That was one aspect of it, and then another good friend of mine, uh, an attorney uh, by the name of Cogan, gave me a call and said that uh, his son was doing a project at his school in regards to um, gang members, this, that, and the other. And uh, so anyway, we matched these two guys up, and well, basically the two, the two guys matched me up with the mindset <laughs> of we need to do something about um, what can we do to reach out to some of these young folks who have not committed issues or whatever. And so it was really a good matchup because we've had, uh, uh, and I'm talking about uh, uh, David Cogan, uh, who, was, who was doing the project, and, and then we had... Uh, Arthur here, Jenkins, who had been exposed, if you will, to the whole issue of gangs, but also paid the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate pay, and then that was the, the under about major eleven, and he had to spend some eight years, about eight years, seven, eight years. Yeah, about that. But seven, eight years uh, in the institution uh, for crimes he had committed or whatever. It was, it was a tough deal. So anyway, but the bottom line is that we're using the Voters Digest in this show uh, to see if we can. We, we can, by reaching out, we can kind of educate some of these other young people that are out there. Uh, hopefully they don't get caught up in these situations and, and support the young people like, um, like David uh, Kogan uh, uh, about uh, maybe doing something and, and exposing it to these kids that are in school so that they want, maybe they can avert getting involved in these kinds of issues and whatever. So I still feel that it's a strong, the position should be that um, uh, it's really a, a, an adult problem too. I mean, we're the we sh we've got to be responsible. We're the one that makes the rules. We're the one that makes the policies, and this, that, and the other. And uh, and so consequently, we need to get involved. So anyway, that's what I'm. That's what we're trying to do here at the Oregon Voters Digest. And so just follow with me. Be, you know, uh, uh, bear with me and whatever. We 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 may open up the lines today, and uh, I think it'd be a good thing if you like to call in. You can give us a call. We'll do it on the second segment of the show. When we break, we'll have we'll have the name, the number on the screen, and you can join us. And um, so we'll do it that way. The other the other reason why I'm 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 doing this show today is that uh, you know Father's Day is next week, which will be the 16th of June, and um, so the, this is a Sunday prior to that. And uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is that uh, I'm sh sure through the years, for some of you who have been looking at the show here at the Oregon Voters Digest, uh, is that uh, Father's Day is very dear very dear to all of us and unfortunately we don't we don't make a major emphasis on Father's Day as much as we do Mother's Day but uh, I think it's just as important that we recognize Father's Day I've even said in the past from a historical standpoint that um, fathers can be mothers on Mother's Day and uh, m uh, mothers can be fathers and and vice versa uh, women can be fathers Definitely. and the like and so, but anyway, but the bottom line is that um, uh, traditionally uh, on Father's Day, the gay community marches downtown Portland on Father's Day. I've asked them uh, from a historical standpoint, I've asked them many times to see whether or not they might be able to switch that date and, and just have Father's Day and spend the time doing that. But unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. Then I couldn't generate any, any support from some of the folks at City Hall and uh, to have a, a Father's Day kind of a march and make it make it a make it a major situation but unfortunately that didn't happen and you know that's that's just the way it is folks here in here in Oregon right now so uh, so we're gonna celebrate Father's Day today with Arthur because he is a father he's got two two kids a boy and a girl and he's, he's these are special to him and uh, he will he recognizes that he wants to main he want to be a good father Unfortunately, he's got his past that he has to deal with, this ballot measure 11. And, you know, now that he's out, he's, he did his time, you know, now he's trying to get back in society and, 
And once you get in that criminal justice system, it's kind of almost like you're going to continue to do the time. And that's another issue that, uh, uh, you know, that's another issue that we need to talk to the policymakers and the like and whatever. Not that we shouldn't have deterrence for, for crime and people who do bad things should be locked up as far as I'm concerned. I think everybody does. But the fact of the matter is, you got to look at what that, is, what that definition is today. And so, so anyway, so we're doing Father's Day today with Arthur, who is a father, but at the same time, we're going to just kind of go back and, and give you something and give young people something out there and, and you parent something out there, uh, a, a little bit more insight of what had happened and transpired with, with Arthur, and here he is trying to change his life to be a better father, but also his history, talking, getting in, in the criminal justice system was something that was really tough, and so, so it's going to be a tough situation for him, I'm sure as grown-ups, if you're, if you're a father and a mother of a young person, you're constantly wanting to make sure you identify with your grandkids, and that's another major issue. And uh, so, so just bear with us, and we're just gonna go on and talk. So, Arthur, welcome. Hi, how you doing, Mr. Bursar? Just fine, just fine, just fine. Well, where are we? Let's first off, let's. Uh, uh, I'm sure you wanna you wanna wish uh, Happy Father's Day to to everybody out there. You yeah, know. definitely. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, um, especially my there. father, Arthur L. Jenkins Jr. Um, my grandfather William K. Jenkins and um, all the other men that you know do the best they can to be fathers to the children. It's definitely a hard job, most rewarding job on the planet, but yeah. definitely the hardest in my book. Is that right? Okay. Well, how do you feel about your kids? <clears throat> I love both my kids to death. Um, me having a girl and a boy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Uh, how, I, old, how old are they, Arthur? My uh, my son is seven months and my daughter is two and a half. Um, she'll be three in October, so um, it's definitely a um, different situation uh, with both of the children and both of the children's mothers, um, so each situation I have to kind of deal with on a different basis, mm -hmm. and especially the fact that one is a girl, one is a boy, mm -hmm. and and definitely that one's still basically an infant. You yeah, know? This, was, this was out of wedlock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It was... Yeah, it was out of wedlock, okay, but yeah, I've, I've known yeah. both of the women okay, for... Okay, you're not married right now, right? No. Okay, okay, but you're still respecting them and yes, definitely doing, doing everything you can. Definitely. For your kids. Definitely. That's a very important mm -hmm. piece, right? Definitely. So you were in touch with them while you were while you were in the institution? Where you? Um, <clears throat> both the mothers of my children I've known for extended period of years. My, um, my daughter's mom, I've actually known her since... Um, before high school. Okay. Okay. So well, you were out when you had these kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've, okay. I've been out um, since 2008. 2008. 2008. 2009. It's been to me. It was like just kind of moving on to another chapter. Yeah. Sometimes right. I forget if it was 2008, right. 2009. Cause I try to right. leave it behind me. Right. But um, yeah. So I've been out for a while now. And that happens to a lot of males too. You know, after you spend that much time, you know, right? Yeah. You just want to go on. Am I right? Just move on. With okay. Your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I> <laughs> Okay, but like, like I said, you, 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 you're taking on that responsibility of being a father. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's the most important job uh, that, that I, I feel a human being can have. Not necessarily being a father or a mother is more important, but, you know, having an emphasis on the next generation's life is very important. And teaching these children how to be involved in, in their society, how to be good people, how to be God-fearing, how to how to vote, which we all, in, in the society that I grew up in, well, I don't know too many people that mm -hmm. voted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, just just teaching your children how to how to have an impact on, on, on the world. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I might not have an impact on the world, but I want to have an impact on the life that's going to change the world. Mm -hmm. And if I want to change the world, I have to change the world through my children. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's always nice to leave a legacy behind when you go. Well, now you get the other thing too is trying, trying to you know that you're trying to develop a support system. You know, so mm -hmm. you get your job. You need yeah, a job, right? Exactly. <laughs> and right now you're just basically trying to hustle at any kind of a job that you can get where yeah. a person may not look at your record, right? Basically, right? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty I, tough, huh? Yeah, I, I've actually been been able to come up on a lot of jobs since uh, since I've been incarcerated. Um, a lot of the jobs are not necessarily jobs that you most people would want. In today's economy, um, I worked with people that were had bachelor's degrees that were flipping burgers because of the economy. Mm -hmm. And so, for somebody that doesn't necessarily have the you know a bachelor's degree, um, mm -hmm. it 
kind of hard for 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 you to compete with that and yeah. these are lower end jobs you yeah, know yeah. and yeah how difficult is it to get a job if you if you with your past experience and if, if, if your situation of being a former inmate or whatever um well with, with being a, with with being a, um being a felon, if it was a misdemeanor, I, I, it's, it's the problem. no problem. The What's the difference between a felon and a, and a misdemeanor? Um, a, f a, 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 a felony is more hein heinous, heinous crimes, more uh, more crimes that society considers more heinous or more in the more person to person. Mm -hmm. or some some felony crimes aren't person to person, but majority of them are, um, and they're just kind of looked down upon more as like going into the store and stealing a candy bar, you know, or um, stealing a car or something like that, you and, know. And your, and your situation was you, just for the benefit of the, for the viewing arts, yours was a situation where you were with a group of young you know, I, I, men. No, see, this is, this, is, this is the situation that I've seen so many times in yeah, our society bro, is that um, young boys are going to be mentored by older men. Okay. And this is just the way, this is human nature in my mm -hmm, book. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a basketball coach, a football coach, a gang member, whatever it is, you're going to be mentored by older men. Mm -hmm. And those older men usually have more influence over you than your parents. Mm -hmm. In my case, um, I wasn't, um, I was having situations, I was raised by a single father. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I respect my father so much. But he also had his own issues. And when he wasn't around, when he was having his own issues, and those were drugs. I mean, just be upfront. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It was drugs. Yeah, um, okay. He's definitely he's clean and sober now. He works Good. for a Good. great organization that works with you know um, pe people that Good have. Citizen. Yeah, he works for Central City Concern, Good. and he's he's Good. he's made a strong comeback, and I'm very great. proud of him. He's definitely probably the smartest man I know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that that mentoring that 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 you're supposed to get from. Because you ever heard the term, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our society, that village sometimes are gang members. Mm -hmm. And I was 15 years old, barely, when I got incarcerated. But I was being mentored by some older guys that necessarily didn't have... But it was a village. Yeah, it was a village. It, yeah, was, it, was somebody, it, had, it, it had a definition yeah. of its own. Yeah, yeah, it was a village. Yeah, it, it wasn't necessarily... It wasn't a positive village, yeah. but it was something that... I needed right, that okay. I was searching for right. outside of okay. my home and it was there and they were there but um, I, I don't blame them because I don't feel like they were taught anything better than what they were teaching me mm -hmm. but I also think that's a socio socioeconomic situation and it needs to be handled mm -hmm. and instead of incarcerating 15 year old children for eight eight years because they were led astray by some other grown men that were led astray you know um, and giving them eight years I feel like this situation needs to be handled um, proactively and abruptly so that, you know, we're not throwing away our future. Mm -hmm. And it's not just African Americans or um, Asians or Mexicans or Caucasians. It's the whole community of Americans that are winding up in this situation. It might be, it might uh, show up more in certain communities, mm -hmm. but it's an it de definitely um, is an issue that needs to be handled mm -hmm. in our in, in well, what, Oregon could, as a whole. You, could you recommend a solution? What do you think a solution might be? Um, I think the first solution would be going into the schools and teaching children about Measure 11. If we're going to have it, if, uh, at least we need to tell the kids, like when you hit 15 years old, if you commit these crimes or these type of crimes, you, you will be treated as an adult. And it needs to be handled. That's why I mean proactively. It needs to be mm -hmm. told to children very early on it doesn't need to be taught at 14 when you're just you know you might you might already have some behaviors mm -hmm. and you look at it like oh i'm already uh, you know they'll never catch me or you know whatever it may be it has to be handled <clears throat> probably in middle school before before mm -hmm. it becomes an issue you mm -hmm. know and having having truant officers and 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 people like me ex gang members that can go in and say to these children this is not the path you want to go down mm -hmm. or like david like david yeah, Cogan. yeah david Cogan david, or their yeah. or their peers just yeah. just ha having it there be a, a discussion about it with mm -hmm. the children is mm -hmm. definitely the first step mm -hmm. and then i'd say the second step is talking to the people the the, the parents who have voted this in and definitely I've seen measure, parents, 11, measure yeah voted measure 11 in that regret it after they see their children go away for it. they're like oh I never thought it would touch home because I thought you know it was just 
their kids, not my kids, you know. But those, those cultures, as yeah, to, yeah. I never thought it would be my kids, because um, as parents, we can always be blinded mm -hmm. by whatever we think our children are doing, especially in teenage years. You know, sometimes parents look at, turn a blind eye, or you know, just never recognize because they got the, that star in their mind. Well, you know, you brought up a good point because I was reading the Oregonian the other day, and and uh, I guess three young African males, mm -hmm. African American males, had, had placed a Facebook. Someone did a Facebook mm -hmm. on uh, on with a, an act of a, a young lady. Mm -hmm. She was doing certain acts and whatever. And they put they put their three photos pictures in the paper, mm -hmm. and you can imagine what's going to happen. Yeah, that. Okay. It, it just kind of it, it just kind of young people as well. We got you got this technology right. You got everybody mm -hmm. playing the Facebook. Right? In fact, mm -hmm. I I saw I saw three young ladies that were in the front of my restaurant be, be, getting ready to go down to, I guess their their relatives' uh, boat or something like that, and, and uh, they were putting something on Facebook to email to one of their friends. Mm -hmm. And she was basically dancing in a in a kind of a provocative, a provocative manner. manner aspect of it, and you can't do that. And, now, and and once you and what people don't realize is that once you put these things on camera, uh, on social media, it's basically anybody can access it. Yeah. And yeah. when you're if you're 14 or 15 when you do this or 13 whatever the age may be, um, when it when you get 25 or 30 yeah. and you think all that's behind you, yeah, it's, it's just sitting there. It just pops up on and, you. And, and when you said, and I said, these are the three men that did this, three young men mm -hmm. that did this to a, a young female. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen what culture she was from. Yeah. In the photo. They, they cited the three photos with the with the African American. But they didn't say the, the culture, they, they of, the, culture the, of the, the, the female. Uh -huh. Now in this situation that I saw, here we go again, uh, here's another female doing, taking this picture, she was white, mm -hmm. of this other young lady who was white. Mm -hmm. uh, in a provocative way aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Now she didn't realize that this is on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Now she could be just as, she could get to eleven just as well, right? Female. I mean, she she won't get measure eleven for dancing, but um. But I'm just saying the same thing was saying yeah, about she could, this other yeah, on females, a provocative yeah, way. Yeah, I'm just saying it's not just males. No, no, no. It, Female, it, females can um, definitely. Have you known? Have you known where females are actually young females have actually gotten into <clears> that measure eleven? So, yeah, definitely. So it's I not mean, just a male thing. They actually have a, a youth facility. Um, I can't remember the name of it, mm -hmm. um, but they have a youth faci facility specifically for for females. When I was incarcerated in uh, McLaren OIA, uh, mm -hmm. they had a um, co-ed facility called Hillcrest. Mm -hmm. That there were a lot of females that were in females. there. A lot of females that were in there for many Various level. cultures, not yeah, just. various cultures, uh, various uh, economic economic right, statuses. Right. Um, it can happen to anybody. Right, right, and, right, right. And the truth of the matter is, it might be happening to to certain cultures more, mm -hmm. but the way it's supposed to be handled, it's supposed to be. Um, there should be no discretion involved. It should mm -hmm. be automatic. Mm -hmm. yeah, set, yeah. Auto, oh, sorry. It should be an automatic uh, uh, amount of time for mm -hmm. these behaviors, regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the, the judge has no say. The district attorney has say, but he's not supposed to negotiate. Mm -hmm. He's just supposed to say, "Well, here's the policy. Here's the here's, law. Here's, here's, the, here's the law. You 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 um, committed a robbery in the first degree. You're mm -hmm. you're going to get an automatic seven mm -hmm. and a half years, mm -hmm. and that." That's and, how again, and, and so in a major solution, just like you were just saying, that needs to be educated yeah. so to that, the population yeah. across the board yeah. in the school De system. Definitely. Wow. Wow. I mean, if, 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 if you have kids on top of a hill and there's wolves on the bottom of the hill and you never tell the kids there's wolves down there, mm -hmm. and then when the kids run down there and get eaten because their ball goes down there, mm -hmm. whose fault is it? It's not the child's fault. It's the community's fault for not telling the children there are wolves down at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. And that's the case that we're having in our society. The children don't know what they're getting into. Well, tell me this, Arthur. Okay, now, we've been talking about the kids that have not done it yet, and then now we're talking about the kids who've gotten, like yourself, mm -hmm. you've gotten caught up in that situation. Now you're a young man or whatever. Mm -hmm. What about when you were incarcerated in the institution well, was there any kind of an education there that kind of talked to, okay, fine, one, hey, let, let me tell you, you did do this, mm -hmm. and then now here's the transition piece. Got yeah, me? De definitely. Well, when I don't, I don't know what's While you're going on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've actually been out, of, um, out for a while now, but I, right. so I don't necessarily know what's going on now, but when I was incarcerated, 
They had um, violent offender groups, um, sex offense groups for the for the people that had committed sex offense. They had cognitive thinking groups, which is definitely an oxymoron because cognitive means thinking. So mm -hmm. I never understood we're doing thinking thinking groups, which is <laughs> totally different. <laughs> never made sense to me. Um, drug and alcohol groups, gang groups, um, multicultural groups for every culture. Was it working? For me, it worked. And well, I, what, what I, were you thinking about it? if you were to make an assessment of, of, of the programs that were there available during that particular time? I think I think dur during my stay, I, my tenure incarcerated, I would say that um, a majority of the people that were, I was incarcerated with um, benefited from them. And then you also, after you finish high school, when I was there, you could you could make money and support yourself financially and stack money for when you got out. Make money how? Wait, wait. Um, when, jobs, yeah, there were jobs. Um, Everybody had that opportunity to work. Well, yeah, everybody had the opportunity to work, but you had to be ha have a GED or hi finish high school. So, and I finished high school at the age of seventeen. So that was a carrot in order to yeah to get uh, the job. Yeah, and then my a lot of them did get jobs. Yeah, um, and so I, there were times where I was making. <clears throat> I mean, I know people incarcerated make twenty five, fifty dollars a month. There were times where I was making a thousand dollars a month. Really? Yeah, and helping out my family members from being incarcerated. What um, kind of work? What kind of work were you doing for a thousand bucks a month? Uh, building lattice, lattice fences, uh, skids and cradles, sub bundling. I mean, actual uh -huh. manual labor that uh -huh. took some, you know, some 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 skill and some some hard work. Did you get an apprentice or something like that, like a like carpentry or something like that? Did I, I didn't, but you have the opportunity to that do that. That was available. Yeah, it was available. So I the trades were available. Yeah, and then they also had uh, further education, mm -hmm. which is online education at, mm -hmm. at colleges. I see these are things that I heard that they don't necessarily do anymore mm. um but that was there when you were there yeah they were there when i was there now take us to the trip now, now you're out mm -hmm. I'm just you, now you're out mm -hmm. i take it you're, in a, you're assigned a probation officer right yeah i was i'm off parole. no but i'm just saying but the, the, mm -hmm. i'm thinking about the transition yeah. you're now assigned a probation officer mm -hmm. right parole okay parole officer mm -hmm. what happens but what's the, what's the um, job? What, what's what, what's what's the, what's I mean, the deal? What, what's most probation officers ex like the, me specifically? I had stopped gangbanging during my incarceration, so and I worked with, with several community members and taught uh, gang classes and taught classes uh, targeted towards helping kids. I uh, officially became kind of like a mentor, a teacher, because mm -hmm. I'm older, and I had been there for a while. Um, so when I got out. I still had to do gang parole, mm -hmm. um, which means no contact with gang members or, you know, um, no drugs, no alcohol. Now, tell me something. No That's contact with police. Out. Now, when you got on parole, on probation, did you have to go back? Did you go back to the same area where you committed the, the, the crime or did you or did they give you the option to leave, leave the state? and? Or something that means. I mean, it's, it's actually pretty hard to, to, to leave the state. You have to get things transferred, and uh, they sent with them, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever county that you committed that crime in. You go right back to the same one. Mm -hmm. You have to go, you, you have to. You think unless that you helped? get transferred. You think that helped? Mm -hmm. it, it just really depends. I mean, on the individual, it really depends on the individual, but um, I don't think for most people it's beneficial mm -hmm. to come back to the place that you. Mm -hmm are known by the community as a criminal or where your criminal ties are with people that are going to be uh, peer pressing you mm -hmm. uh, to do negative things again. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me, but um, I've actually seen people succeed in that situation, but or just kind of not necessarily succeed, but not become prisoners again. But I also have some friends that they go try, back again. that that tried try their hardest not mm -hmm. to go back and it just happens right you know? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what do you think so what about a solution to that situation do you think maybe an option might be to give you the option to go in another place maybe yeah it's, it's just it's just kind of hard situation because if you're from Oregon um, and you want to go to Washington Washington has to accept you and Washington might say well we don't want your your dirty laundry in Washington, why would we take him here? What if they just did a switch? Somebody did something in Washington would come to Oregon. Yeah, that might versa. yeah, that might work, but Oregon's probably gonna say, We don't want your dirty laundry from yeah. Washington. So yeah. it's just kinda a hard situation. I mean, most of the time, um anybody that I've seen ever have the opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, 
to transfer, it usually happens for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it does. Yeah, anybody that I buy, because most of the time it has to. You have to be successful in the community for a little while before they'll transfer you, or you have to have a, a family member um, mm -hmm. that lives in in that other state mm -hmm. that's actually a positive mm -hmm. influence on you. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, I've seen anybody that's usually left after um, incarceration. Uh, um, it's happened for them, but it's just just a process. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me something. Along that same, on that, in that particular process, uh, when you get out, are you expected to have a job at the time and a place to stay? I mean, you're, well, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. What's the deal with that? You're, you're you're expected to have a place to stay. I Please mean, say, okay, they so. they offer you some places to stay, but after 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 being incarcerated for a measure eleven, which I think the lowest the lowest amount of time for measure eleven is like five years, ten months. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go stay at a place where there's a whole bunch of other criminals. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to mm -hmm. go to a place where you can sit down and watch TV and rest and kind of like plan your next step. You don't mm -hmm. want to go to a place where there's a whole bunch of other criminals that you were already locked up with and now we're all in community mm -hmm. and like we could all possibly run away from here and go do some mm -hmm. negative behaviors mm -hmm. or go out and have a drink when we know we're not supposed to mm -hmm. or go smoke some marijuana or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. and the next thing you know and that does happen yeah and it, the next thing you know everybody's in Inverness mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we, we haven't had freedom for a long time mm -hmm. so those opportunities are like oh man I ain't smoking weed in five years you yeah. know and I used yeah. to love weed yeah. it's everywhere you know or I want to drink so bad. I haven't mm -hmm. had a drink in seven years, mm -hmm. and it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're back. You're back. It mm -hmm. might it might be for a short stint, but you're back. Now what about now what about the job? I mean, you gotta have, you gotta have some way of uh, supporting yourself. Are you getting paid during that time? The probation right after you get out of the deal? I mean, do they I'll, give you do they give you a nice big check? Maybe a, if you if you had money on your books. <laughs> if you had money on the books. Otherwise, you get what? Go home with nothing. With nothing. Nothing. Wow. So what about the job thing? I mean, isn't there an expectation that you got to have some way of, of supporting your, yeah. yourself? Yeah. I mean, what do they do? Do they have an employment agency or something? They have they, they have programs that help, help you know, people learn how to make resumes. And they also teach you how to write resumes while you're incarcerated and cover letters. And they have uh, play, places that... Uh, what about better people up in Northeast Portland? Better people's good. Yeah. 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 I think I was in that, I was in that program. Now their job is basically finding finding jobs. Job. Yeah, I was in better people. Um, and they actually helped me find a lot of jobs that I wound up with. Um, but a lot of the time, those jobs, um, short term work. Short term. Term. I mean, it, I mean, when short uh, short term, I mean like three months, five months, mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. maybe, and you gotta go find another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the center Chip Shields was the one that put that piece together. Yeah, Better People is a good program. Better people, okay, good, good, good. Okay, like we got about a we got about another minute. Well, in fact, what we'll do, we'll just go on and just take a short break now, and okay, and we'll come back and continue this discussion. This is good. I think the viewing audience is going to like it. We're going to open up the lines too at this Definitely. point in time, and if, if you want to share some thoughts with some of the points that were made here by this young man and some of the things that were on the table, the whole idea is to see what can we do to help our our culture, our mm -hmm. folks here, young people, whatever, not one, not get into these situations, and two, how do we transition folks that have basically did the crime and did the time? Be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, the Oregon Rose Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. My guest today is a gentleman, young man by the name of Arthur Jenkins. Uh, if you if you got the first part of the show, uh, you're, you're right here. We're getting ready to go into another session. If you haven't, uh, 
Uh, you notice the timing of uh, the show will be here on next Tuesday. Uh, that's, I think it's the next show. That's, that's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday uh, at 12 noon and uh, the following Friday at, on ch at 8 p.m. That's on Channel 22. And on Tuesday, it's Channel 23. Okay, but you'll, you'll notice that. But anyway, uh, we've been talking to this gentleman and... and, and uh, that you have to, and, I, and I still maintain that that, that commitment and, and the family oriented to, yeah. to the core, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm.